it going guys? On today's episode uh, here at Tucker Moon, we're gonna talk a little bit about our interior wall assembly. Everything from the half inch blue board, the veneer type plaster, and then the finished paint. We install a half inch blue board with a single coat veneer plaster over the entire surface rather than the commonly found drywall with mudded and taped uh, joints and screw holes. It's commonly found in our region, uh, not so much outside of this region. Um, I know there's a contractor in New Jersey, shout out to you Tyler, uh, that has told me that he couldn't even get blue board if he wanted to. It's not used, it's not found, it's just, it's just not their practice. Drywall is going to take a little bit longer. You are going to have to mud, let that dry, sand uh, multiple times. Where the plaster, you're actually installing the half inch blue board uh, and you can immediately start applying the plaster. Similar to drywall, you are gonna tape the joints, but we're using a fiber tape over a paper tape. It's a single coat, so typically they go around a room and they'll scratch coat all the, all the joints, and then immediately following that, they're gonna start applying a veneer plaster over the entire surface. As you can see behind me, this wall is actually not painted. Uh, this is a finished coat of plaster. Rodney from Perfection Plastering is gonna be my plaster on site. He does all my work, he's been doing work for me for years now. Uh, he does an incredible finish. Once that plaster is applied, we're gonna let it cure for seven days. There's a lot of moisture and humidity associated with the plaster, so we wanna make sure we give it ample enough time to dry out, especially for paint adhesion. I have Graham from Big Dog Painting in the other room setting up. Let's go check in with him, and he's gonna walk us through his process on how he goes about painting and prepping an entire home. The first step we do on any job is we protect the site. We like to cover the floors with a, a woven building paper. That way um, none of the paint or solvents or anything gets through it and it protects the floors really well. Another thing we do is we mask all the windows. Um, just anything that could get damaged, we cover. That way no paint gets on it and when we're out of here, everything is good to go. I actually noticed the other day I, I was impatient and I ripped up some of the paper on the stair tread to see what it looked like against the black and it was certainly more difficult to tear yeah. up than, ros say, rosin paper. Exactly, with, with rosin paper, you're just constantly fixing tears, and you know, God forbid you have a little spill, and you're just you're chasing your tail. The building paper, it's a, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it in the, in the time-saving aspect. Anytime we have fresh skim coat plaster, all we use is oil-based primer. What we find is with the oil-based primer, it, it helps balance out the pH levels in that fresh plaster. The ton of lime in it, paint doesn't want to stick to it. When we spray our primer, we use a cross hatch. We spray one way and then we spray the other way. It creates the appropriate amount of mills that the walls need. And we're using that primer on the ceiling, the walls, and the trim. We reprime all the trim too. So that oil, it helps hide all the tannins. If there's any knots, anything like that, that stuff wants to flash through right. on the finished paint. The oil just helps negate that completely. So walk me through the finish process from the time primer is done to final coat. Basically, it's just, it's a ton of sanding. We start using 180 grit sandpaper and we work our way all the way up to 320 grit. Before and in between every single coat, every substrate that we're touching gets sanded. We're trying to create that tooth for all these finished coats to bond to. Then we use the primer, that's our chemical bond. So when we leave here, everything's good and strong and works well. Graham had kind of filled me in here. The black paint takes a lot longer to cure. Because of the heavy content of tint, you know, it just takes a little bit longer to get to that final, you know, hardness uh, for that paint. That's one of the reasons that we actually switched to, uh, from the Benjamin Moore Advanced, which is a water alkyde, to the Benjamin Moore Regal Select. This project here is kind of a tight timeline. What I had to do in, in the fashion that we had to do this project, there's a lot of masking involved and the advanced product is an awesome product but it takes a really long time to cure Understood. it takes like two weeks to cure and my fear especially with this black if we went to mass to it we'd be pulling it off because we couldn't wait that extra we two couldn't weeks. wait that two weeks still a really good product and it allowed us to just kind of move along as far as the trim in the door paint typically we'll go with the semi-gloss but here we actually went with a pearl finish from benjamin moore uh, we were looking for more of a satin finish uh, which also was due to the kitchen cabinets what we're going to be using, which is going to be a satin black. Black was used throughout the first floor and ran up the staircase to the second floor hallway. As you enter the, the bathrooms on the second floor, as well as the bedrooms, 
Uh, all that trim was actually painted white, but also a pearl sheen. As far as the wall color, we used the Stonington gray, uh, and then we, we actually adjusted the tint to it, 25% uh, lighter and 25% darker, depending on the room. We really liked this color, so we wanted to utilize it as much as we could. But at the same time, we were trying to make each room a little bit different. Make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, and for behind the scenes, check me out on Snapchat. Also do me a favor and follow Graham here on Facebook and Instagram.